This video file was recorded in Sabunji University during recitations for the CS204 Advanced Programming course as it was given in the spring semester of 2017. The last example for today, the last example will be something that you'll see during the operating system course, namely it's producers and consumers. Actually it's an example that we already saw it in a way today, but let me just include the files at the solution folder and we are going to go through it. I'll try to be as fast as I can. So producer consumer, we have queues here and this is it. Okay, let me run it. System pause stuff again. This is what I get. I have a queue. In that queue, only one, a producer, can put an element, and two consumers, two guys, can take that element from the queue. Okay? But that queue is global, shared. That's why we should be careful about when we are trying to queue and dequeue and whatever, because this is what we might have. So this is our queue. 0, 1, up until I don't know, size minus one element. Let's say that we have only one element in the queue. Let's say the value of that guy is five. And we have two threads, thread one, trying to access it, and thread two, also trying to access it. Basically, try to see whether the queue is empty. It's not empty. If the queue is not empty, it's taking it and consuming it. Consuming means if there is some data here, it takes it and processes it. It's going to process that. But we have two threads, two consumers in our case. So what happens is the following. Thread one checks whether is it empty. So both of them are doing this code, checking whether it's empty. If it's not empty, so if the answer is no, then consume. Consume means dequeue it. Both of them are doing this stuff. So we have the thread red and thread green. Now let's say thread one is scheduled and it's asking, and we have only one element. It's five. So it's here. Is it empty? Yes. So this guy is done. Now it's here. Just about when it's about to consume the five, it stopped. It's the turn of the right thread. And we're asking, Again, is this empty? Yes. Consume? Yes. It takes five. We don't have it. It's decute. Now it's the turn of the thread, of the red thread, to decue the queue. But when it tries to decue, what's going to happen? We are trying to decue from an empty queue. The program is going to crash because for sure it's waiting for some data. But if we use uh, mutexes, we won't have this problem. So this is our stuff, our, what we are trying to do. We have a producer that puts elements here and we have consumers, two consumers that are trying to consume the elements that the producer produces. Let's go very briefly with the, with the Q class. I'm not going to explain it in details. Uh, so this is my Q class. What we have here are the following stuff, the following stuff. So this is class Q. We did it like maybe two weeks ago, two months ago. Private. We have this array, pointer to an array, called Q array. Then we have what? Q size, front, rear front points to the first element, rear points to the last element when, when the queue is not empty. So we, we have three, seven, one, two. Those are the indices. Uh, number of items, which is the number of items I currently have. 
there's the size also an integer, the maximum number of items I can have, and so on. We have the most important part for the queues here, the public parts, public members are in queue. We know what it's doing, it's putting an element at the rear. DQ is taking from the front, then is empty, checking whether the queue is empty or not. Is full, whether the queue is full or not, and so on. I mean, those are trivial things. Should I go through the codes about the queue? I don't think so, because we already did it. We know how those works. So we have the queue array, the front pointing to the first element, the rear point pointing to the last element that we entered. When we are going to take, we take from front. When we put, we put to rear. Sometimes you might switch the logic, but it's the same. Okay, sometimes you might uh, put in front and take from rear. There are those, the, this is an implementation issue. Okay, so I'm not going to explain the integer Q. You can check it. What's important here is the following. We have a Q called MyQ. It has 10 elements. So from 0 to 9. And it's a global variable. We have my mutex and C out mutex. Now you might assume my mutex is just for this guy here. So my mutex is to log the queue. And the C out mutex is to log the C out. And you, we have the buffer here. Uh, no, this is. So this is the C out, which is also public. We have the buffer of the C out where we put our data here. But C out, C out mutex is related to the C out. And my mutex is related to actually not this Q, but here. So when I access this guy, this big rectangle, no one can access it if I put the lock. Then I have the producer. What is the producer doing is the following. We have maximum 30, 30 times, although we have 10 places here. I want to produce, enqueue it for 60 times, 2 multiplied by 30 is 60. Why, it's, why it is the case that I can do it? Because I produce some things. And while I'm producing consumers, take it. So I put like three elements, one consumer takes another, take one, it decues one element, another one decues another. And I put other elements, they decue them. I want to do this stuff, enqueue elements, 60 times. And how do I do that? When I want to enqueue, I want to be sure that no one is touching this guy. Because we saw previously why, okay? When it's shared, I'm locking it. So I'm locking the mutex. And I'm asking whether it's full, because it might not be full. If it is full, I'm enqueuing an integer i, random number I can say other i, and I'm unlocking the queue. OK? This is how I put an element. Since this is shared, before queuing something, I enqueuing something, I should lock it. When I'm finished, I unlock it. Now this is the part when I want to print the, the message that something is Enqueued or produce, and I'm saying the producer has produced item i at time, and I'm putting the time. I'm not going to explain this stuff. You can just copy paste it as it is like here. It just gives the time. In order to use this stuff, you should use the Chrono library. Okay? And I'm finished. Is this okay? So I'm unlocking the mutex, I'm unlocking here. But there's a problem. What is the Q is full. So if, if it's not full, I can enqueue it. What if it's not full? What should I do? I should do what? Unlock the lock. The, yes? This is a common mistake. When you have if, you say, okay, I, I unlocked that. I locked it there, but I, add, I unlocked it here. But what if the queue is full? That part is not going to be executed. And sometimes you skip this part here. Okay, and you forget to unlock it. This guy is locked. The others are waiting for it to be unlocked, and it will never be unlocked. And this is called a deadlock. Deadlock. Okay? That's why I'm unlocking it, and I'm decrementing the count, because I want to put 60 elements in. 
I didn't put any element, although I used one counter. I'm decremented it, decrementing it. This is how it works for the producer. Now let's go with the consumer. It's doing the opposite, basically. Uh, since we have two consumers, the counter goes from 0 to maximum to 30. 30 plus 30 is 60. Okay? And the producer, which is 1, produces 60 elements. Again, I want to dequeue something. I'm locking the queue. Check whether it's empty, because if it's not empty, I'm not dequeuing it. I dequeue the element, increment the counter, because I used it once, and I unlock it afterwards. Finally, I print the corresponding message, but in order to use Cout, I'm using the Cout lock here. Okay. And I'm printing the start to consume, blah, 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 at this time. And afterwards, I started at this time, I finished at this time, that's why, but those are different stuff. That's why I print this one, after sleeping for 10 milliseconds, which is to simulate the processing of the data, I print that the time when I finish to consume that element, because when you take something from Q, you process it. Now this 10 milliseconds is used to simulate that processing stuff. Again, I log the C out Q, I print when I finish to uh, to process that stuff and I unlock the Cout queue. However, what if the queue was not empty? Let's well, so I go to this else clause and here we unlock my mutex. Okay? This is it. Nothing else. This is the main function. We have three threads. The producer. Producer doesn't take any because we have one. Doesn't take any parameters. The consumer, you remember, it takes an ID of the consumer, consumer 1, consumer 2. We join all of them, and when those threads are finished, then main is finished, and this is it. Let me run it again, and this is it. You see, item 59 has been dequeued. I've started it in 153305, I finished it in 05. This is how it works. I'm starting from 0 to 59 items. And I have here thread uh, this producer. OK, 1 and 2 started to consume, 2 started to consume. They, then they, afterwards, we, we print the time when we are finished with consuming particular stuff. OK? This should be all. Did you understand this example? Okay. Any question? If there are no questions, you can mail me about your homework, although I doubt that you will need that, because your homework is straightforward. We saw the backbone of your homework during the last class. Good luck with your homework then. See you next week. Thank you for your attention.